a local farm is known for their premium meat, but that's not all they do. Cody and his caravan are out in Marysville this morning, giving us an insight look at farming hay coats. Uh, good morning to you. Good morning to you. We got Rhonda, Rhonda here with uh, Yuba River Ranch. So uh, when I found out you were doing Wagyu beef, I was like, wow, I didn't realize anybody around here did this. And that's because you're the only one around here that does this, really. In this part of California, yeah, we are the largest um, Wagyu breeder in California, registered uh, Wagyu cattle, black Wagyu cattle. Um, yeah. So, okay, so you've got the largest. So tell them how large that is. It's, Could give them an idea of how specialized this it's is. It's 80 registered cows, um, and we're registered in the United States and in Australia. See, that's wild. 80 is the largest. That's how it's special small. it is. It's yeah. very small, yeah, but but there are very few of these cattle in the United States. Okay, so what what makes these cows different than, let's say, Angus? They're, they're world-renowned for their high marbling, mm -hmm. uh, tenderness, and flavor. Okay. Okay. And they are delicious. <laughs> they really are. It is such a difference, such a difference. So how did you get into this? So about 10 years ago, um, we've, we've always had um, cattle, beef mm -hmm. cattle. And my dad told me that we needed to figure out a way to capitalize, make a little more money with the cattle that we had. So I asked him about these Wagyu cattle, and he told me if I brought them home that he would probably <laughs> write me out of the will because they are not the most attractive cattle on the planet. <laughs> um, so I bought two, uh, brought them home, and we started breeding heifers with that first bull. And uh, once we got the wrapper off of one and, and got to taste that, yeah, we were ruined. So now the whole Angus herd is bred to Wagyu. Oh, okay. Now, when you say Wagyu, uh, people at home are like, okay, what's the difference between that and Kobe beef? Right. It's really the same thing. It's just where they come from. It right? is. It's the same breed of cattle. Um, but to be called Kobe beef, it has to be produced in the Kobe prefecture in Japan. Mm. And so um, there's a lot of misinformation out about the breed. Um, you'll go to Costco wag or, Costco or um, like Nugget Market, mm -hmm. and you'll see American Wagyu on the shelf there. That is an Angus Wagyu cross. Those are 50-50%. Oh. So, so the American version is a little different. Right. So yeah. if it's labeled as American Wagyu, you can expect that. Um, but with that said, there are a lot of people that don't believe that there are full-blood Wagyu cattle in the United States, and there are. Yeah. Um, last I, I read, two right there. there's two right there. <laughs> last I heard, or last I read, there were about 5,000 full-blood cattle <clears throat> in the United States. Get out. That's yeah. it. So we're we're growing the herd, um, but there is a, it's a small gene pool, so we're we're careful with that. Yeah. This is so interesting. So interesting. Thanks for having me Absolutely. out. Absolutely. Uh, okay, so we're going to get to know them uh, and talk some more about uh, what, why they're so special. And then we're going to try some later on. We I'm are. very excited about this uh, because it took me 50 years to try for the first time. And then I was like, oh, I get it. I, I totally get we it. We rolled a tomahawk out for you. So oh, did you really? We oh. did. We did. Wow, it's going to be a good day. All right, back to you guys in the studio. Yeah, Cody, I love a, a good Wagyu burger. I'm curious where she might think is the best place for a burger, at least in our region. Um, if you don't mind getting that question for me mm. answered, that'd be awesome. Thank you, Codes. Indeed, indeed. We're hanging out with my friend Rhonda here at uh, Yuba River Ranch. So you guys do other stuff besides just Wagyu. What else do you do out here? Um, my dad grows rice. Oh, okay. So we're, we're invested in all of the Japanese items. We grow <laughs> rice and we have Japanese beef. Yeah, we're, we're large farmers as well. Uh, at, at any point in your life, did you think that you would be in this business? No, no, not at all. Um, the beef business, yeah. I've oh. always been intrigued with the beef cattle and, and how to get them from pasture to plate. And these cattle have just added, added so much. It's so interesting. They're so interesting. Okay, so tell us some more about uh, how they're different than, say, Angus or other types of cattle that we're used to. Well, it's that high intermuscular marbling, mm -hmm. or that, that intermuscular fat, the marbling, and then um, the, the tenderness. It, I, there's some that we've turned out that you can just cut with a fork. It's just absolutely wonderful. I was kind of joking. I was like, are we looking at cows or, or are we looking at unicorns? They're unicorns. They're unicorns. They're Because there's only 5,000 registered 100% Wagyu Correct. in America. Correct. And if you look at the numbers, um, there are quite a few commercial cattlemen that are doing the crosses now. Mm -hmm. And so we're seeing, from what I've, I've read, about 40,000 of those cattle in the United States. Uh, now, you don't like to toot your own horn, but I will toot for you. You won a major award, and it really helped out the business. I did. I did. I actually won the uh, Meraki Award last year through the Yuba Sutter Chamber of Commerce. 
Um, it's an award for women in business, um, and we bought embryos mm. with that. Um, there were some high-end <laughs> embryos, and of the three embryos we purchased, one of them is seated in one of these recip recip cows that we have, and that calf is due on May 2nd. Oh, Very excited. Oh. Hope for a girl. Everybody hope for a girl. Everybody hope for a girl. Uh, <laughs> we had a little baby, though, a surprise yeah. baby. Yeah, that calf is 20 days early, and we were really surprised that he made it to begin with. And uh, he's doing very well now. He's adorable. Yeah. He just like he keeps running away and yeah, he's yeah. hopping all over the place. Uh, this is fascinating to me. So the difference between Kobe beef and Wagyu is that Kobe has to come from that region of Japan. But the Wagyu in America is kind of the wild, wild west right now. It is. Um, we don't have a lot of proof of labeling. Mm. So when you see Wagyu on a label, you really have to kind of make yourself familiar with what that product is. Um, American Wagyu is that crossbred, typically Angus crossed with black Wagyu or there's red Wagyu too. Um, but if, if you're looking for 100% full blood Wagyu, it, it should say that. Mm. Um, the USDA has not regulated that yet. Though. Oh, okay. So that's really interesting. We'll get there. We'll get there. We'll get there. We'll get there. You're registered not even, not just in America, but also where else? Australia? Australia. We register there because they have something called EBVs, which give us numbers. They apply numbers to the cattle that tell us a marble score or marble fineness, how the cattle grow, um, how much milk they might produce, and we can make breeding um, decisions based on those numbers. Mm. You are fascinating. You are fascinating. This is so fascinating to me. Uh, we're actually going to try some coming up. We coming are. up. It's a big day for me. All right, back to you in the studio. Okay, Cody, remember, best Wagyu burger. Where can I find one? Best Wagyu burger. Where, where she, could she find the best Wagyu burger? Right here. <laughs> right Unfortunately, there. Unfortunately, no, we've had people reach out to us, and we mm. don't have a lot in stock right now. Mm. Okay. Um, I, I, I can't tell you. Yeah. To find a full blood Wagyu burger locally, it, it, it would be difficult to find that. Yeah, um. and it would probably cost more than your car. <laughs> 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 All right, back All to right, you. Cody, thank you. It is fascinating. It's so fascinating. But now all I can do is drool. Would you look at that tomahawk chop? Oh, my goodness. So delicious. Tyler's working on it. He's been writing songs. He's been singing songs for us and cooking at the same time. The man is multi-talented. He is very multi-talented. We keep him around for those two things. <laughs> <laughs> well, maybe his looks, too. He's a, he's a handsome dude. Okay, so we're about to try this. Now, the, if, if we got to educate the folks at home. When we were talking to Wagyu, there is some education you need to know about this. Absolutely. Um, first of all, know what you're buying. Mm -hmm. So when you go to the store and you see American Wagyu, know that it's probably 50-50 with something else. If you get full blood Wagyu, and you've watched him cook this one, know that the fat melts at a different temperature. So mm. it can often melt at room temperature. It is, it's that soft. Wow. It also is better for you. It's higher in omega-3s, uh -huh. um, and it, it, it's a much better fat for you plenty of reading on that <clears throat> so when you do cook it we like to put a nice char on it and then move it off to indirect heat until it comes up to the temperature that you want and you really don't need a lot of spices or rubs and stuff like no, that. no typically we use just salt pepper garlic he's used a, a rub on it uh, a, that's a little stronger today but mm. yeah spg now i i'm not just hanging out with you on the ranch i'm also hanging out with a fellow journalist you yes. also write. Tell, yes, tell I do. about that. I actually write for Wagyu World magazine. Um, it's a magazine for breeders, um, breeders to breeders, basically. Um, but there's a lot of beautiful pictures of beef and meat in there, too. Mm, I imagine. Yeah. Um, the, the stories that I write are typically ranch reach. So we talk to other breeders about their ranches and how their program works. Or I'll write um, articles on animal health, mm. how to take care of your animals. Dehorning is a big one with this breed because it is a horned breed and the horns can cause damage to other animals. Yeah, yeah. So. They are fascinating creatures. They are fascinating. Really I am so fascinated by this whole world that you've dropped me into. Um, if people want more information about the ranch or, or maybe the publication or if they want to get into this, what do they need to do? Um, definitely reach out to us. We're really happy to help guide people, mm. um, not make the same mistakes we made. <clears throat> you can find us um, at our website at uberriverranch.com. Uh, we're also on Facebook and Instagram.
Because this really is a burgeoning, bulging, burgeoning kind of industry in America, but we're on the ground floor of it. We right are, now. and we would love to see new breeders come in, and we're happy to help new breeders along. I think it's amazing that you have the largest group of them in California, and it's 300. 80. <laughs> 380. 80. Oh, 80. 80. Yeah. 80 registered cows. That's amazing. Yes. That is so specialized. Yes. So specialized. How's it going over there, Tyler? How's it going? There. We're getting there. You're getting there? We're going to pull it off here in about a minute. Okay, he's pulling it off. Sean and I are going to be eating good. Back to you guys in the studio there. Look at that. It's beautiful. It is. All right, Cody, thank you.